Thank you, Tony, fellow Toastmasters. Your immortal message. Remember me, and you rem will remember my message. My name is James Dean Warwick, and I'm the past president of Evergreen Toastmasters. And I'm here today to deliver to you, give you just a little taste of my 50-minute speech that I'll deliver at the Fall Conference on November 6th. The purpose of this speech is educational, and at the end of it, you'll understand better the importance of crafting an immortal message and ensuring that your audience gets what you want them to remember. What's in it for you as a speaker? You'll become more credible and a more professional speaker. People will remember your important message and tell others. And you will not waste their time or waste the time of others. What is the point? What is the point of spending all that time and energy crafting your message, practicing your message, bringing it forward towards your audience, and taking up seven minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of their time, and the time of everybody in the audience. What is the point if they can't remember what you said? You'd be amazed at how much people actually remember of your speech. And I'm on a personal mission to change that, to make sure that every Toastmaster and every public speaker goes that extra mile and puts that little bit extra in their speech so that people remember their important message and are able to tell others. I'm going to tell you a story. Who here went to the Spring District 21 conference in Victoria? Okay. I want you to imagine this. Beautiful hotel, 250 people in the room, all of them high-level Toastmasters, including the current president of Toastmasters International, Pat Johnson, who's from Vancouver. Distinguished District Toastmasters, 250 powerful speakers in the room. Very beautiful setting, everybody had a nice meal, and now we're going through the end of the program where people are being introduced and various awards were given out, etc. Then it came time for the Vice President of Education for the Fall Conference to come up and promote her slate of speakers this fall. And eventually she came to me, I stood up on the stage in front of 250 people, and this lady, Cindy Chan, proudly stood up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, this is James Dean Warwick, and he will be delivering a very important speech in November called your immoral message. <laughs> now you can imagine what happened in that room. Uproarious laughter for three or four minutes and chit chatter and comments back and forth and people saying, I can't wait to hear your message. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is a perfect example of an unplanned, free, immortal message. Free, a gift from the gods. A miracle. And even today, when I ask people who've been there about that particular moment, they still have some special memory of that funny occurrence. It is an immortal message now. People will remember it for the rest of their lives. However, fellow Toastmasters, can we plan to have a miracle happen every time we deliver a speech? Sure. Yes? Yes. 
We can stand here and say, oh, please, give me a miracle. <laughs> make something happen that will make me immortal. Well, one of the reasons that we are at Toastmasters, obviously, is to plan and practice our speeches in a safe, comfortable, and supportive environment so that we can deliver more effective messages and people will remember us and will remember our important message. That's why we're here. And I'll just touch upon the first three speeches of the CC Manual. Now I'm redoing the CC Manual twice this year even though I've already been accredited as a CC or CTM. And the reason that people redo the basic manual is because fundamentals are always important in any skill that you learn whether it be a language, a sport, or in public speaking. In fact, all of the top level speakers, the winners in Toastmasters, do at least one CC manual every year. I'm doing two this year. And the reason is because it teaches us, us what we need to know to craft effective messages. And 80% of success in your life, in your business, and in your job is based upon effective communications. So congratulations to each and every one of you in this room because you're making a great decision and a positive step to learn how to become a better speaker and a more effective communicator. And the first three projects or three speeches in your manual help you with that. Project number one is, is the icebreaker. It teaches you how to deliver a good story. Speech number two gives you the structure for every speech now that you'll give to the end of your life. Open, middle, close. Make a point, tell a story. Make a point, tell a story. And then a powerful conclusion. And speech number three is get to the point. And I made my point earlier. Get to the point is all about purpose. Why are you up here? What is your important message? What are you trying to get people to remember about your speech, about yourself? and that particular important message. So please, I encourage everybody, my mission here today and the reason I'm standing up in front of you is for you to read and reread those three speeches because they set the foundation for every single important communication you'll make now until the rest of your life. Do your homework. Now, I will be handing out these handouts after my speech to help you remember what I'm speaking about today so that you can remember and tell others what you learned, my immortal message. And what it is, it's all about self-evaluation. Now that's another wonderful thing we do here in Toastmasters, is that we evaluate people. And we evaluate to grow and get better. And this is about self-evaluation. And this is a really important aspect of any time you deliver a speech. Because if you want to make a difference in people's lives and in the lives of others, they have to remember what you said or did or wanted to present. And what, what you need to do is that during the break or after your speech or at the end of every single meeting you have where you've delivered a speech, you've got to ask questions of your audience. What do you remember? Why was this important to you? And how is it going to affect your ability to speak better or change, change your life in some way. By asking those questions, by doing a self-evaluation, you now know a lot better what worked well in your speech, what people actually are going to remember and take away your immortal message, and how to improve the next time. Next time you craft your, your speech, you'll know, hey, maybe I should put this in or maybe I should do this differently. Because it's those important questions that you do with a self-evaluation that are really going to dramatically increase your ability to be an effective communicator. And not only after your speech, at the end of the meeting, but a, a day later, a week later, months later, go back to those people and say, what do you remember from my speech? Do you remember anything at all? And you'll be absolutely astounded at what people don't remember. Get to the point. Why waste people's time unless you can hammer home that message that's going to last forever, your immortal message. That is your mission. And if even one person in this room six months from now remembers 
something from what I'm telling you today, I've done my job. I've done a good job. And that's what I want to encourage everybody in this room to do, to think about. Now, Mr. Timer, how much time do I have left? Two minutes. <laughs> Two minutes. I'm just going to spend one minute on a tip on how you can enhance the memory of your speech, and then I'll just conclude. My speech in the spring was about your fear of public speaking. And six months later, I still ask people what they remembered from that speech. And these are the, some of the images that they remembered the most. Now, these images were based on fear. But you can see that how useful a single image can be in getting your important message across. Because more than anything, people are going to feel remember what they felt about your speech more than the actual content. So I encourage you at any opportune time, try and use powerful images as part of your speech. And we're all striving to become great speakers, humorous speakers, competent speakers, right? Yes. This is our goal. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> Again, humor. This is, humor is as good as fear. So that's a tip to help you craft an immortal speech. All right, in summary, your immortal message. People, what they really remember is how they felt more than the actual content. So please use passion in your presentation. Give them some takeaways so that after your speech, even right after, or a week after, or even a month later, they can go back and they can remember something. And even if one person in the room remembers something a few months down the road, you have an immortal message and you've done a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my educational speech for you today. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna hand these around and I'll hand the lectern back to our Toastmaster Tony.